Welcome to the Cardinal Sports Complex in the Bob Pivot Courts for CTN's live coverage of high school tennis. Today features a matchup between the Coon Rapids Cardinals and the Northwest Suburban Conference opponents from Spring Lake Park. Joe Yund on the sidelines, joined by Rumiel Setz. Thanks for, for joining us and, and bringing some expert uh, insight on the tennis. No, thank you so much. We're going to start looking at the first singles matchup between Sam Rio and Zach Erythum. And uh, Rumiel, the, Sam has, has been uh, on a tear so far, 9-1 and one on the season and uh you know just a junior but but boy does uh he have the the talent to to compete with uh the best in the state oh yeah yeah he's on fire a lot of these uh players he's been beating this year i've actually had the the honor of playing with uh in the off season and he's just playing smarter and smarter tennis every week And we saw, you know, Sam has, has been, uh, he was a big part of the team last year as a sophomore, obviously the year before that, his freshman year, uh, lost to COVID, uh, the 2020 spring, big slam right there. Uh, but uh, saw him as an eighth grader get some, some varsity time as well. And uh, Coach Storick even was lobbying to get him up to the varsity ranks when he was a, a seventh grader. What is it about him uh, that makes him so special? You know, I feel like he's just receptive to all types of coaching. Um, getting him in, getting him to play with a lot of these uh, varsity players early on gave him the exposure and the time to just sort of settle into that sort of uh, level of play. And he's just taken every opportunity he can to, to take it in, uh, to experiment with it. And, and I feel like that's just driving his success. And you've been working with the uh, with the uh, tennis team uh, this season. What when you, when you watch Sam, you know obviously he's he's a well-established player. What kind of pointers do you give him? I mean, is it uh, what where are the areas that that you see that that he may still need to to kind of improve on? You know, I wish I would have spent more time with him uh, during this season. I haven't been able to get on the courts with him too much just because he's been handling his business pretty well. But um, for the most part, it's first strike tennis. It's it's whether your opponent is pushing you off the court, pushing you around the court, or giving you kind of these static balls. Uh, can you recognize an opportunity to go in? Can you strike first and then follow it up and execute and finish them off the court as quick as you can? But um, I think if anything, it's just going to be patience, waiting for that one ball to strike. And they so impressed with the, the team in a, as a whole off to a six and four start. That includes two losses uh, by four, three scores. So, uh, you know, playing very strong and not a single senior on the roster. Yeah, that is that is wild. It's such a young crew. I'm so excited for the depth to, to continue on throughout the years. And we won't see them today, but uh, the Held brothers holding down the uh, second and third single spots. Uh, Ryan, just a, a writer, just a sophomore, and, and Cooper, a freshman, um, means great things for this program for years to come. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. You know, and Cooper, too, being as young as he is and knowing he's got other players on the team like Sam who have climbed the ranks, uh, you know, starting as early as he has, it's, it's just good to see that the – that the history is there, that the opportunity is, it's it's in front of him. So I'm glad he's able to take advantage of that as well. Mario took the first game and now Erithum with the service trying to climb back in. Only loss on the season for Sam Mario thus far against a Maple Grove opponent that uh, is one of the, the top ranked players in the state and a, a player that he, he faced against last year. Um, and you know this year, while, while he still lost uh, in straight sets, uh, much closer sets than they were last year. Yep, yep, he's learning. He's learning from his mistakes. He's 
spending a little bit more time watching his opponents and just feeling out the points. And I feel like he's you know he's already doing that now, as we saw in that first game. Um, Earthum is is just attacking cross court, trying to create some space, but. Sam is just able to stay cool, wait for his opponent to make one error, and then he just takes advantage. And you can see Earthum definitely has plenty of power on his on his strokes, um, but power isn't necessarily uh, the most important aspect to uh, being successful. Exactly. I mean, if you have weapons, use them, but when you use them, I think, like you're saying, matters more than anything else. And a break for Murillo puts him up 2-0 and gets him the service back and uh, he's seen a, a lot of that as well uh, you know winning not only in straight sets but but giving up very few games along the way a lot of momentum to build off of I'm I'm really happy to see I'm really happy to see how well he's able to manage the momentum a lot of players, uh, especially at his level, um, in my experience, have, have done one of two things. They they enjoy more of the uh, underdog sensation, right? They start off kind of slow and sluggish and then uh, use that uh, to sort of fuel the comeback. And others just kind of come out swinging a little too hard and, and try to dish out their weapons too fast. And, and, and the, the game just kind of gets away from them. Earthum really with a really good opening point to this set, uh, able to uh, force Mario back off the net and then approach on his own and, and get the winner. But uh, there, the you know baseline stroke just handcuffed him a bit, sent him into the doubles court. Nice use of slice there too. They're bringing it all out just the first few games. And it is not warm out. The sun could definitely help. It's it's warmer than it has been for parts of this early season. The, the wind is definitely uh, a factor, but uh, how much more difficult is it to play uh, in those types of conditions? Great play uh, there for Earthum, and he's uh, got a solid lead here trying to uh, break Sam's service and get his first win of set one. But I mean, obviously, you know, everyone's more comfortable when it's 70 and sunny out, but the, the fact of playing tennis, high school tennis in Minnesota, you have to deal with, uh, with the, the weather conditions, but I have to imagine it takes a it's it's a little more difficult to to play in in uh, you know 35 degree wind chill yeah yeah it definitely challenges uh, a, a lot it challenges the IQ honestly more than anything else um, you know obviously when you've got chill factor like this you've got to get the body warm you've got to keep it warm um, that does a lot on your mental but if you understand how wind affects the ball understand how to adjust your strategy according to the weather, um, that'll make or break any player regardless of their level. Well, after Ruthum had that strong start to that uh, service from Maria, Maria able to close it out with the last couple of points. Great win down uh, to the uh, forehand corner. And he's uh, quickly ahead 3-0. He looks like he's ready to get out there quick too. Yeah, they didn't. Did he didn't take a very long break? Obviously, it, you don't. Uh, uh, you know, dehydration doesn't become much of <laughs> as much of a factor when it's this cold. Uh, you're not losing a lot of uh, water through sweat. But uh, yeah, he he took a very short break and even forgot to update the scorecard. But now he's done that. Focus is there. Earthum getting some pointers from one of the Panthers coaches. Not the start he was looking for as he double faults. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
was just going to say, I mean, starting strong like that, we're seeing it's sometimes it's a lot easier to, to turn it up than it is to turn it back down. So. That one just a bit long and quickly behind. Love 30. Wow. A solid ace. He's got a really, he's got good power. Uh, and that first service is is uh, strong. We saw the, the double fault. Uh, but I've always felt like, you know, first service, it's obviously you want to have a great first service, but uh, having a strong second service really sets uh, a player apart. Because uh, if, if you don't get that first one uh, in and, and there, that second service is uh, significantly softer, um, it just uh, to kind of takes the control out of your hands uh, on your service. Oh yeah, for sure. Most uh, most coaches will will live and die by the two second serve strategy. You know, you want your second serve to be almost identical to your first serve because we know most players are going to be jumping on top of that second one. They're expecting a weak second serve. Rhythm played it just a bit wide, and now couple of break points for Murillo. And we'll see that second service from Eartham here is the first just a bit long. And he gets let, fortunately. I once took a high skip off the top of the net. A bit too long, and uh, four and zero oh lead for Mario. I feel like that was a perfect example of patience at play. Just wait, wait and see who's gonna who's gonna shoot first, who's gonna give somebody something first. It seems like Sam is just a little bit more prepared to to hunker down. Trying to back him off with a long lob. It's a bit too long. just a bit long but uh, we've seen that early on Maria doing a really nice job of of getting earth and moving moving him all over the court big part of why he has been successful so far you know I was thinking back to all the matches you know my teammates and I have had to play in conditions like this and <laughs> it's it's really easy to to kind of focus on a player making mistakes, you know, hitting long, hitting short. But just just thinking about hitting out and what that does to your confidence, I can see why these players are maybe hitting the ball a little bit long um, more than we'd, than we'd probably see them, is they're, they're just trying to maintain confidence in their strokes. It's easy to freeze up. It feels like you got frostbite all in your joints. And so the more you hit out, the more loose you tend to be. Earthham just missing long on that one. I believe this will be game point for Murillo. I 
could be wrong. I've always been impressed with with tennis. It's such a you know self governing sport. You know, they, you, there's a lot of trust between opponents that you know they it'll be called fair on the other side in and out and uh you know whether they're long or not um there's a lot of a lot of trust and and obviously a lot of sportsmanship required uh to play tennis at this level and yeah. that was game point in amarillo with the 5-0 lead here in set number one yeah the uh the team sport but also a very independent sport at the same time, the honor system. I think that's a really healthy, can be a very constructive and healthy thing for, for, for the youth to, uh, to come into contact with. Well, and I, I assume it's that way from the time you start playing at, at the younger <laughs> levels. Uh, you don't have line judges uh, everywhere you go, but uh, it's always to me, uh, been one of those impressive things uh, you know other sports that I was not as familiar with I have become far more familiar with over the years here at CTN but uh, you know the for instance the the trust and sportsmanship to, to you know kind of self-govern in, in tennis uh, the way that um, you know swimming and diving uh, once once they've clinched the match they the, the winning team no, no longer, adds points to their team score those are uh things that you know you didn't see in in the sports i grew up with uh you know those those sports that are more in the public eye hockey baseball football softball um basketball you, you know you, you wouldn't see a, a basketball game where a team has a, a 30 point lead so uh, <laughs> they don't put points up on the board every time they they score the bucket uh, anymore, or you, you wouldn't see uh, a basketball game where where they were allowed to call their own fouls. Uh, it just so uh, to me that that is a, a great aspect uh, of sports like tennis. And of course, we we talk about it all the time. The fact that tennis is a is a sport that that you can play forever. Um, you know, my, people playing well into their 60s, 70s, and even 80s, um, and those who don't, maybe they switch over to pickleball, which is taking the the world by storm yeah i'm not upset about it yeah <laughs> i'm so glad we're uh tennis is able to, to partner with it in a lot of different ways lifelong sport you know why not add on to it whatever draws people to it to stay healthy and stay active more power to it and get outside and play exactly no matter the temperature yeah <laughs> Mario trying to break service again here on Earthum and sweep set number one. Seems like he's struggling just to get the serve in now. I wonder if that's the pressure getting to him. Well, and again, you talked about confidence and, um, you know, the mental aspect, uh, tennis such a mental game uh, where obviously the the you have to have the the physical abilities and the skill uh, to play but but if you're not uh, focused and strong mentally um, it, it, uh, it you'll find it very hard to be successful um, one reason why I, pl I played some tennis when I was a kid just for fun um, but so competitive and and so um quick to get down on myself i never would have made a good tennis player i don't know sometimes with age the more you play you find ways to channel that and i don't know i i, I don't want to say that gone are the days when you see players on changeovers and during timeouts whipping out the notebook and going over their self-talk but I don't. I don't see the. I don't seem to to see the focus, or the emphasis on that, as much. Yeah, 
a 6-0 win in set number one for uh, Sam Murillo at first singles. We're going to take a look at the first doubles match as well. Cal, Jens, Cal Jenswold and Joe Savelli on the court for Coon Rapids, taking on Philip Gable and Ian Pivovar for Spring Lake Park. Uh, Jensfold and, and Savelli, I think uh, like a three and two record as a as a doubles team together um, so far this season. They, you know, Coach Storick, as he is inclined to do, likes to shuffle things around. He uh, had uh, a number of players moving in and out of of different spots, except for first singles. That that one was pretty sewn up when they started the season, but. Uh, these two have settled in nicely and, and uh, have played well, even in their couple of losses to, uh, they came to teams like Maple Grove and Centennial that are top level uh, doubles teams. Uh, they've, they've competed well and, and held their own. Mm -hmm. You know, and all that shuffling around is, uh, I think, it, I think it, uh, it does a lot of good for, for the, the team. You get players coming in out of different positions, getting different tastes, different looks. Sharing the wealth. And as soon as we moved over to doubles, one of the best volleys <laughs> of the match so far over uh, to start the second set at first singles. That was wild. Uh, yeah, they, although we didn't see it, Eartham had, had uh, Murillo scrambling a bit. I believe came up with the win on the point. Looks like they might have mixed up their tennis balls. Pivovar went and got the Got it and got back, and we'll see Cal Jensvold on service. Jensvold, one of the co captains for the Cardinals this season. Sometimes doubles and singles can feel like two different worlds, two different games you're playing. Doubles is a lot more about applying pressure, you know, keeping pressure on the entire time. Usually the first team that gets to the net wins the points. Well, and I was just going to ask, you know, you talk, we were talking about uh, Coach Storage shuffling things up. It's something he's done forever. Uh, when you played, uh, did you see a lot of, a lot of time on both singles and doubles courts our team composition was was pretty different from this we weren't we weren't as young in my formative years so we had positions that were pretty well established um when when one person did cycle out it was really just one player uh on one position so there wasn't too much shuffling i think everyone had it nailed down um what, where they were playing and, and why it was helpful to the team comp. Savelli's so return just a bit long and that's a break for Gable and Pivovar. They had won the, the first game as well. We'll see when they update the board if that puts them up 3-0 or if it's 2-1. Looks like 3-0. And so a uh, little bit of a slow start for Jensvold and Savelli.
And this, this as, I, as I talked about, the, the mental aspect of the game, when you find yourself down early on, what do you have to do to, what do you have to tell yourself to, to keep yourself from really getting down on yourself and, and to kind of help yourself battle back in? Oh man, a lot of things. Usually just, just pick out a couple. Keep it simple, right? Keep moving your feet, right? Uh, move on to the next point. Or, or pick your favorite shot, the one you're the most confident in, and, and go with that. If you're really in need of some, uh, some assistance you know, on changeover, use the coach. And let's see if the coach has something for you to anchor yourself to. But no Gable and Pivov are both left-handers. Does it, does that make it more difficult when you're on when you look over and see a pair of lefties? Oh man, I'm notorious for not even looking at that. <laughs> I didn't even notice that you mentioned it. Yeah, it does. Oh yeah. Even from uh, from the start, the serve kicks out to a different direction. Not used to that in practice. Turn just spun a little bit wide. Jenswell trying to play cross court. Nice play. Hey, you know, that's something I've seen Coach Storick promoting more and more as the years go on is that chip and charge technique or that tactic, especially when the wind is taking the ball all over the place. Yeah, I would think that gives uh, the Cardinals a, a little bit of a kind of more of a, a home court advantage uh, playing in these kind of conditions. Just, uh, you know, the, the positioning of the court, uh, it is very windy here uh, quite often. You see a lot of teams uh, that have uh, wind breaks around their courts or, or their courts are just in spaces that are maybe not quite so open so the wind doesn't become uh, as much of a factor. For sure. A lot more time on task for Coon Rapids uh, playing around with the chaos. Strong net play that time for Savelli. Arnold's just trying to chip back in one, one game at a time. You know, one thing I love seeing from uh, the server's partners on both ends is the psychological pressure that they're putting on those returners. Just moving a little bit, juking them out right before the return, making the returner think about something. Well, you see Gable playing way close to the net. Closer than, than a lot. Uh, you see play kind of mid-box. Uh, he is right up on top of the net. He's definitely letting his presence be known. Talk about the lefty spin, I see a uh, See, he's going for this down the tee, and for a righty, if he can hit that spot, it's going to get away from the back end, which is already going to put you at a disadvantage. So he gets it right, it could be deadly. Yeah, I had noticed that. Uh, Pivovar was left-handed in the warm-ups. It wasn't until we kind of moved over and started uh, watching him that I realized Gable's lefty as well. Oh, man. 
man. Soft return by Jenswold will push that one back to Deuce. Cardinals back to the advantage. Really handcuffing the Cardinals with that lefty serve. Savelli, a good play right at the feet of Pivovar, making it a little difficult to get the racket on. That play will give Coon Rapids its first win here at first doubles. And that'll give the, the service to Savelli. This is a big service now, you know, down early 3-0 uh, you get that one back on the break uh, opportunity here if you can hold serve to to be right back in uh, this opening set yeah, for sure as much pressure as there is to to come back uh, the team on top has also got to be thinking about well we can't let them in can't let them in we got to maintain this pressure so we'll see which one of those comes out on top well and Savelli starting with a double fault certainly not how he had hoped to uh, start his service. Okay. Is, is it hard or, or do, does it, it seem that most have a, a preferred side to serve from? Do you, for, for instance, for you, was it easier for you to serve uh, from the right side or left side, or, or did it make no difference? Do side's usually the easier to serve on. Um, add side's a little bit tougher because it's usually the deciding point. So if you're on add, you know it's you're either going to be finishing a game off, playing to finish a game off, or, or playing to save yourself. But uh, you also get into right versus lefty. For a... Nice, volley. For a righty, you're going to want to serve from the ad side because you get a better look at the, uh, the the backhand of the player, your opponent. So I guess it really depends on what's going on. Not really a good answer, but <laughs> an answer nonetheless. I think it's fair.
it's 40 30. It sounds about right, yeah. And if that was right, that means we're at Deuce again. After we saw a long back and forth at that point in the last game, Coon Rapids finally coming out on top. And this is where I think and things get really fun. We've had some Deuce games go 15, six, 16 iterations of Deuce. And now Savelli's in a position where, you know, even though they're on top, he's got his ad. They've got to close it out here. See which way the pressure swings. Played into the net, and that will give Coon Rapids the win. So they're right back in it at 3-2 here, down 3-2 in the in the opening set. We're going to move back over to the singles court where Sam Mario is just cruising right along. The board says 3-0 three, here in set number two. Not sure where they are in since that changeover I could be wrong but I believe it's 4-0 Murillo Sam made it to state last year and I don't remember what the record was like 18 and four or something 18 and six maybe it was it was a pretty impressive record and when I talked to him at the beginning of the season he said I just want to be better uh, than I was last year better in every aspect of the game uh, I want to be uh, you know have a better record at the end I want to get back to state and go further well that's uh, you know setting the bar high is is not a bad thing and uh, you know he's he's definitely off to a great start oh yeah you know, and that again, I love I love that mentality of, you know, the person I gotta beat is is myself. And one of the things again that the coaches have gone over is is the difference between standards and expectations. On a day like this, keep those standards high, but make sure to adjust those expectations. You never know what you're gonna have to deal with. You're gonna have a good day, a bad day. Be willing to adapt. I think Sam's doing a really good job of that. Score shows. Ooh, looks like he's flipping two, so 5-0 and a, a chance to, to finish up the sweep here. And like I said, you know, as soon as we switched over to doubles, that was probably the longest volley uh, there has been in the in the match. And, and it ended up on that long volley, it ended up with uh, Earthham winning that, that point. And kind of watching it out of the corner of my eye as I was also paying attention to the doubles match, but um, you know they for for other players who are not you know in the position that Sam's in right now, um, how important is it to to take the little victories from from those those matches that don't go your way and just think, you know, I played out some really strong points um, and and uh, try and and take those positives out of it how important is that extremely give yourself a lot of grace you know take the wins when you can and learn from your L's that's usually what uh, we try to teach them before you know it you know you've built something really strong service there from Earthham and Rio could not return. Leave 15 all.
seems like every time we switch back, we get an intense point. On the court, we're not watching. Exactly. <laughs> You know, and I know we've been talking a lot about uh, mentality here and, and confidence, but something's been kind of irking me for the last year as I follow players like Sam. It's, it's, it's I've noticed and I wonder how much of an athlete's experience is judged and based on the outcome rather than the journey. For like what really separates some of these players uh, from loving the sport and succeeding at sport is is just understanding that it doesn't always have to come down to a win or loss. It, it can be a win and a loss, but also just realizing, you know, what you've gone through and how that's built your character and your athleticism and, and whatever else you can take away from it. Oh, I agree a hundred percent. You know, I, I, in my coaching days of baseball when uh, my son was young, um, and after a loss, uh, you know, kids frequently got, got down on, you know, oh, we, we lost this game. And my, my thing was, was always, hey, if you came out here, you had fun, you learned something about the game, and you, you know, continued to, to enjoy being a part of the game, whatever the game is, whether it's baseball, tennis, hockey, football, lacrosse, doesn't matter. If you're out there and you're enjoying it, you're doing something that that uh, that you're happy about being a part of a team or or an individual sport that that brings you joy and you're and you're learning something about it uh you really the the takeaway is is not the the win or the loss because at the end of the day uh you know years later you'll remember the time you spent on the field or court uh at the rink in the pool um that you'll, you'll remember all the times you spent, but not necessarily the wins or losses. Mm -hmm. I say that at the same time, I do. Re there are a couple of losses that still stick in my head 30, 30 years after the competitions are over. But, um, you know, the, the, the greatest memories I have is, is just being with my teammates and, and playing the games. Yep. So I, I definitely I agree with uh, with that, and you know at CTN we I, we we definitely try and and look at the positives uh, of Cardinal sports, Cardinal athletes, uh, even in those uh, years that aren't so successful. As Mario gets the straight sets, wins six zero six zero, he improves to ten and one on the season. You know, and I hope Earthum, you know, takes a look at this match and instead of focusing on the pain, he's he's able to kind of nail down where he, he made some good choices and decisions and how he might be able to improve as time goes on. And again, to, you know, think about the, the long volley that we talked about but weren't able to see that, that you know, went back and forth. It was a good, intense point, and uh, he ended up winning winning that point, um, you know, that, that's what I that's that's kind of what I was getting at you know th how important it is to take away yeah I didn't win a single game but I won some big points and what here's what I think I did well to win those points and here's you know where I, th I think I struggled and and why you know I, I didn't win as as many as I would have liked but uh, yeah a great victory for for Mario 6060 uh, we'll go back over to the doubles match which is tight it is now 4-3 at the changeover in favor of the Spring Lake Park duo. And, uh, you know, if I don't, I'm sure they, they didn't get too overly confident up 3-0. But, uh, you know, definitely a different position here. Uh, with their with their lead down to four three and we'll see Pivovar on the service again.
Gable trying to cut it down and lost it into the net. From a coaching perspective, it's kind of hard to to tell who's who's ahead right now. You know, if I'm just looking at body language and, and the tactics they're using, uh, and that's kind of a good thing. I think I think everyone's in it. Everyone's trying things, and we're still trying to, to get our bearings. Strong play at the net for Gable on that point. Evens it up at 15 all. He definitely hasn't abandoned his presence at the net. Yeah, he's maybe not the tallest uh, of the bunch, but he's definitely not short. And uh, he takes up a lot of room up there. And with him just kind of right on top of the net, uh, he's good, athletic, uh, moves moves well, and just makes it hard for the, the Cardinals to get it across. Another strong play at the net, and that puts uh, – Panthers up 40-15. Couple of long serves from Pivovar. Back-to-back -back double faults. Brings us to Deuce once more. This is where the fun happens. And again, that's been, uh, you know, kind of how, how this one's gone. Uh, two pretty evenly matched teams. A lot of, you know, we, we have a 4-3 match, and, and a lot of those games have, have gone to Deuce or even multiple deuce. Add in for the Panthers. Great change of direction. It'll put the Panthers up 5-3 here in the first set. Savelli on the serve for Coon Rapids. Great find. Able to sneak that one into the lefty's forehand. And, you know, unbeknownst to most, the lefty's backhand is usually stronger than the forehand because they're hitting against forehanders all day or the, the righties. Great service there from Joe Savelli. Puts them up 30 love in a game they really need. Yeah, 3 4. Now we're at 3 5, is it? Yep. 3 5.
Great little play between the two Panthers for Cal Jensvold. Give Coon Rapids an opportunity here, up 40 love. Oh, great middle. Double fall will make it 40 15. And a big win right there for the Cardinals. Keep themselves alive here in the opening set. really underutilized serve jamming right to the body. I feel like if uh, they get a chance to bring that out in this set, should definitely be using that again. as they're on the changeover over getting the word from uh, Coach Storick. Uh, you know, just looking down the line, it looks like uh, some, a number of the red numbers larger than the black numbers. Looks like Ryder held and Cooper held both with leads at second and third singles. And it's great to see you know, the Cardinals as a as a whole having some success this season with this young lineup. But, you know, again, back to uh, those two, uh, just a sophomore and an eighth grader um, who will be big parts of this program for, for years to come. Uh, but all down the line, uh, they, they want to they want to achieve great things this year, but know that next year this team is is going to be uh, that's going to be a big year for this team. I, I'm not sure about Joe Savelli, but I know Cal Jensvold's a, a junior. Um, so, you know, and Sam will be a, a senior next year. Um, so great to see him having success this year and, and just how much it means for the, the program moving forward. Good play at the net that time by Ian Pivovar. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of time to build together with each other. I'm sure a lot of them will be a uh, Happy to get out on the courts this summer. Continue. One wide and an early 30 love lead for the Panthers. off the mark that time and uh, the Panthers with an opportunity here uh, with set point a couple chances at set point with Gable on the serve Held just finished his match 
I believe he was victorious at second singles. And the miss hit there by Jensfold will give set one to the Panthers, 6 4. Good opportunity for them to check in with each other, check in on what, what's been going on, see what they can change up. I feel like, though, at the uh, latter part of that set, they were doing a better job of stepping in and finding that lefty spin. So I'm excited to see what they do with that this next set. Coach Storick keeping up public relations. <laughs> you know, and I believe that's one of the middle schoolers actually who's playing on JV, C Squad or JV. Okay. Well, and you know, I talk about it a lot but you know he is one of uh, the most impressive coaches at Coon Rapids Coon Rapids tennis so fortunate to have him uh, he does so much to promote the sport from the youth levels running camps um, at the youth levels uh, running both high school programs um, a few years ago they had um, I think it was like 40 or 45 kids and rather than cut he said we're gonna add we're gonna add coaches we're gonna add another team uh, so that everybody could play and that to me is so admirable um, you know and especially you know again we go back to it's a lifelong sport uh, you want to encourage everyone to be a part of it uh, but also you know I've always advocated for not cutting kids but to, to keep everybody playing at some level or another especially in at the high school ages when some kids will develop later than others um, you know so uh, to have a kid uh, you know get cut from from a team again doesn't matter the sport um, for them to get cut from a team say their freshman year um, and then they may not come out their sophomore year uh, because they lost a year, they're, they're now way behind, but maybe they developed a little later. Um, and I, you know, for me, I was, I was less than five foot tall my freshman year. Um, I'm not much more than five foot tall now, <laughs> but, um, but it, you know, it was, I, I grew from, from my 4'11", my, my freshman year to 5'4", my, my sophomore year. and. Uh, five seven by my junior year so uh, to you know to to keep kids playing is is um, I think a very admirable thing at, at any sport and you know when we look at all of the coaches obviously any any coach at the high school level uh, we appreciate what they do for the kids the school the sport the community uh, but you know two that really stand out are uh, coach Storick and coach Bob Adams of the wrestling team because they not only handle the the high school teams but they're there working with the kids from from a very young age and I guess I, I would also put uh, Denny Green in that in that group because Denny uh, does a lot to to promote uh, cross-country running Nordic skiing uh, throughout uh, throughout the year he's also the the girls track coach um, but uh, you know for for them to, to dedicate that much time and really uh, spend a lot of time um, promoting the the sport in general and recruiting uh, kids and and uh, encouraging them to, to get out and try something new is uh, is very impressive could not have said it better I mean oh Looks like he fell pretty Fifth hard. Fifavar went knee. down hard and slow getting up. Uh, that was played back to his to his forehand, and he tried to to cross back. Hopefully, he's okay, and he's uh, 
Looks like he smacked the inside of his left knee as he went down. Let's give him a minute to kind of stretch that out and walk it off. And I mean, it was, an, it was a great play from Savelli to get him going back to his backhand and uh, just slipped a bit and uh, went down relatively hard. And, uh, they'll take a little extra minute here to make sure that uh, he can stretch it out and And those little things hurt a little bit more when it's this cold out, too. Oh, yeah, for sure. Nothing like slapping a stiff joint around. <laughs> it hurts enough to to hit the, hit the ground, but, yeah, when it's uh, cold out, it just seems to hurt that much more. Forty fifteen, I believe he said. So Cardinals hoping to start the second set strong. And they will get the win in game one and start out with a lead, something they didn't have throughout the first. Looks like just about everybody done there. One other doubles match still going down the way. It's always hard to hard to ju judge. <laughs> Had we known that uh, theirs would have been the tightest uh, contested match and uh, the, the one that takes the longest, wouldn't have had them delay their start. <laughs> Especially with how quickly Sam uh, was able to uh, get the victory at first singles yeah i love the question most people ask is like when is when is when is the tennis match going to be over i'm like when it's over yeah when they're done <laughs> there's no shot clock here correct and yeah, shot clock coming to now that you mentioned it shot clock coming to high school basketball here Ooh. Uh, I don't know if it's not next season, the season after, I believe. Well, maybe, maybe it's next year. Maybe, uh, maybe some of these players will be, get to experience the uh, the shot clock in tennis that they're now incorporating. I believe it's at the college level. Get around 20, 25 seconds, seconds in between each point. Wonder how that would fare in college or in high school sports. Like from the time one point ends to the time you serve the next point. Correct. I mean, I, I they give uh, a little time to retrieve the balls. This it doesn't seem like it. <laughs> doesn't say, I don't know that anyone would ever get close to that kind of <laughs> suppose they got to try and move it along. Oh, wow. Again, good strong play at the net from Philip Gable. He has just been there all match. An incredible out wide serve too. That ball just seemed to nick the line. Really tough to judge. Well, it was definitely not the stroke the Pivovar was looking for. You heard the audible distress as he <laughs> sent it well wide. The Rapids an opportunity to break serve here and take a 2-0 lead in the second. Two lets. Right 
And if you're the Cardinals, you gotta really be aware of where Gable is when he's playing up near the net and just doing everything they can to play it to the other side of the court or over the top, which that one was well over the top. Both Panthers attacking the net. Cardinals lobs not quite getting over, but over enough that Pivovar sends it long and Coon Rapids will take the 2-0 lead here in set number two. So far seems to be a pretty effective strategy. That chip and charge. And even with Gable at the net, that underspin makes it, makes for a very tricky volley. Solid service from Savelli, but a good return from Pivovar, and Savelli couldn't put it back over. Second serve. Tough double fault for Savelli, makes it 15 30. Recovery for Pivovar, uh, but Savelli able to play across court to where Gable could not get it. And you saw him kind of slip again on that change of direction. seem to push through that ball enough. Believe 30-40, so an opportunity for the Panthers to break serve and get their first win here in the second set. Great drop wow. shot there from Pivovar, and you see when Pivovar is playing the up position, he is well off the net. Oh, I was a point off, I guess, because that's, or no, I was right. That was a point chance to, to break, and they did. Uh, but uh, Pivovar plays a ways off the net, almost uh, back at the at the service line. Uh, but, uh, you know, when Gable's up, he is within arm's reach of the net. Seems like P Pivovar likes to sneak his way in there. Just like that, that drop shot. So the Panthers will be serving down 2-1, but up a set. Let's see if that chip and charge strategy sticks. A 
little bit of hesitation there between uh, Savelli and Jensfold, but Savelli was, was able to quick twitch it. Cardinals up love 40 here. Trying to take a 3-1 lead. Trying to see if they can even it up at a set of piece and get it to the tiebreaker. Good play there by Jensfold, but that went a little too deep for Savelli to get to. Still a couple of break points here. Now 30 40. interesting to see how they're handling the uh, change of direction of wind on this side. So far, I think it's worked in their favor. Well, the wind is, has definitely been consistent throughout. I prepared to come up I I looked at the temperature I said hey we're we're almost close to 50 that's that's one of the nicer days of the spring so far <laughs> and then I saw the wind chill and went oh never mind let me get let me grab a jacket can't imagine playing in shorts right now well and that I, I wonder too, you know, obviously you're going to wear a few more layers when you're when you're playing. Does that affect how you play? I mean, if you're wearing uh, a hoodie versus a t-shirt, I mean, that would seem like it might affect your swing a little bit because you're wearing more more clothes. It's a little more bulky. I saw some guys out the original warm up. They're wearing jackets. And I mean, that I've got to imagine that affects uh, how it feels to, to swing the racket and hit the ball. Yeah, it definitely can. I have a feeling it's all personal preference, but for me, it definitely feels clunky. It feels like I don't have as much space to work through. I imagine for some of these guys, it's like a parachute. Yeah. But yeah, I saw some players out in short sleeves, others like, uh, you know, three of the four on this court are wearing hoodies. They're just built different. Deep lob right at the back line. Wow. Just long, and that'll be 3 2 now in favor of Coon Rapids here in the second set. Yeah, I thought the same thing last night, and uh, we I did the girls lacrosse, and there were some players out there that, that had long sleeves on and were wearing long pants, and others that had shorts and, and the 
you know, their their jerseys are essentially tank tops. I same kind of thing. I'm sure it's personal preference, uh, but even you know, even if you're running around as much as they do, it's gonna get a little chilly out there with that much exposed skin. But yeah, the wind today has been just very consistent and uh, is definitely keeping anyone from overheating, I, I am sure. i definitely say it adds to the grit, especially for Coon Rapids, given they're, they're playing in this almost every day. A tactical advantage. just long but uh, both they got a little scared there that Pipovar was gonna strike his <laughs> his teammate on the follow-through they got so tight to one another but yeah you see the Gable just right on top of the net and he's been effective there I mean you know whatever whatever works definitely but uh, you know he as, as I mentioned earlier he's uh, clearly moves well. He's he good athleticism. Uh, moves both both ways pretty well, and and he can do that. It seems it seems uh, the coaching staff for Swilling Park understands that the longer the ball's in the air, the more the wind can do what it wants with it. So I I guess for them right now, just get on top of the net and and stop it where before it even comes over is, is, is the best bet. <laughs> Meanwhile, Coon Rapids is trying to, to maximize the the effectiveness of the of the wind. Throw but, a little under spin. And for this team, they almost have to, to work with lobs, to, especially when Gable's in the up position, because he is uh, not letting anything by him. Pivovar is doing a really good job of popping that ball up out of out of Savelli's reach. He just can't seem to overcome that. Wow. Good point from Jensvold at the net for Coon Rapids. Looks like he used all the racket on that one. Oh yeah, a little bit of frame. Good strong cross court shot from Gable and Jensvold couldn't handle. Doesn't quite have the uh, that net presence like Gable. He might have to tap into that animosity and put those balls away a little bit quicker.
It's really a big service here for Coon Rapids trying to get back in front in this second set. I feel like this is a good time for Sibeli to pick a spot and just continually go after it. Oh, just Great like that. Cross court. He found that one. There you go, you got a shout out from the coach. That's a feel good moment. Liking that shot to Ramil sets back into the process. Unfortunately, follows it up with a double fault. And that will give the game and the lead to the Panthers. Now up 4-3 in this second set. They won the first 6-4. Crucial moment here. Yeah, as big as that service was for for the Cardinals trying to break the upcoming service for uh, the Panthers, even even bigger now as they as they trail for the first time in the second set. And it's been again, it's been very evenly matched uh, outside of the early 3-0 lead in set one for Spring Lake Park. We've seen a lot of back and forth, a lot of games going to Deuce. Everyone came to play, and at this point, it's you know who can who can work with and overcome the elements better. I feel coaches probably got to be telling them you know step into these balls you know the wind slowing it down put it away put a little more body weight into these things get hungrier at the net. Try and keep it away from Gable when yeah. he plays the net. <laughs> yeah, let's be real. That's <laughs> probably the main topic of discussion. That uh, you know, I've, I, I would, I'm far from being a tennis aficionado, but uh, you know, I've watched enough to know that not many players play as tight to the net as he does, and he's done it effectively. Again, uh, you know, he's got long reach and uh, he's athletic enough to. To, to move both ways and, and also uh, get up off the ground and, and uh, play effectively up close. And Gable with the service here, his team up 4-3 here in set number two. Oh, really? And a good play by Jensvold to split the Panthers and get Coon Rapids the early lead. That's a pretty good start. You know, they used to teach this uh, years ago, but if you ever had a player who was riding kind of like that, just a oh, nice shot, just dominating with their presence, they'd say, okay, we'll pick, pick, a, pick a, a reliable spot on the court. It's, players would go, well, I'm, we can't get to it because he keeps, keeps stopping it. And like, well, then it looks like he becomes your favorite target. All that time, and now we see Gable up, you know, right on top of the net, but he he will drop back and then and then creep back forward a little more than Gable that that just stays right on top of the net. It's 15 all here. from the net on that one. Mm. And that'll give Cardinals a couple of break points to work with, trying to even it back up at four all in the second set.
Finally connecting that forward momentum with their hits, getting into the court. Working in favor for their volleys. Strong play there, and uh, Cardinals will get it back to even at 4-4 four -four in set number two. Amount of underspin on that volley. Caught him at the at the net that time. Yep, he didn't have anywhere to go. We're we'll right back at him. <laughs> Not the angle that Pivovar was looking for thirty love as this has uh, this court has become the center of attention here at the pivot courts. That ball did not bounce much. Slipped under the racket of Jill Savelli. Oh. Vivivar again slipping as he as he went back to his backhand. Might check those shoes. See if there's any soul left in them. Just a bit long, but still another game point here for the Cardinals at 40-30. And that's a big win. Puts him up 5-4. Opportunity here with a break to uh, force us to the super tie break. And this is another one of those moments where it's very tempting to, to think about the outcome. Got to stay in every game, every point, one at a time. And I'm sure that uh, that is a part of what Coach Storick is telling his players is we've seen this one go back and forth, but uh, they were able to come back win those last two and, and give themselves a really good opportunity here to, to win the second set and force that tie break. Mm -hmm. And with every other court done for the afternoon, as I mentioned, this has become the center of attention. We've got Panthers sitting on the courts on either side. We've got uh, the bulk of the Cardinal team uh, alongside us here down the fence. Yep. Not sure outside of obviously Sam, we know one his, I believe, uh, Ryder held it looked like one his at second singles not sure what the what the score is if this the overall meet may already be decided but keep it a mystery
I'm getting word that it's 5-1 outside of this match. So Coon Rapids has clinched, but the guys on this court, as, as important as that is, uh, what happens between these lines is, is all they're thinking of. Yep, and knowing Coach Torek, I imagine he probably hasn't told him the score. He wants him to stay in it. Or does he tell him, hey guys, it's 3-3, three, three. it's <laughs> up to you. Actually, I, I, hope he, I hope he did that one. There's Gable Strong at the net again. Oh, he didn't think that one was gonna get over and it did. Just kind of slipped by him a little bit. One of the added bonuses to being the last one's going. You don't have to chase the balls as far. You got you got ball retrieval experts on both sides. But now 40-15. Got to say, I like the way Pivovar calls it. Mm -hmm. Good, loud voice. I know what the score is, especially when he's on this side of the court. Saw that ball move all over oh, the place as yeah. he was waiting on it. And now we're at deuce. Huge opportunity for the Cardinals after falling behind 30 love here in this game. some things that was just kind of held up and then decided it wasn't going to come over. Just not enough working with it. So add in for the Panthers. Again, just great net play by Philip Gable. Seals the deal and there's five all. It's great net play. Not once, but twice. pushes it just a little too far. <laughs> Great idea. He was looking for that corner, trying to slip it past the the uh, backhand of Pivovar down the line, but caught the top of the tape and it's love 30. He's really finding that up to the, the up to T serve. Well, the second set. Wow. 
That one just in tight, kind of handcuffed Jenswold, and now break point here, 1540. Too long, and now that'll give the Panthers the big advantage at uh, at six five. An opportunity to get a win here and uh, and close out the straight stats victory. It just seems like the Cardinals can't catch a break. You know, the ebbs and flows of this wind, both sides is just changing up on them every single time. And they have to constantly adjust. And the near side of, of the net seems to be uh, where people are winning. Green Rapids 1-2, then Spring Lake Park 1-2. Now, when you were playing, was, was Coach Pivik still here? I think he had retired a couple of years before, but he did make a, uh, a guest star appearance every once in a while. Okay. Yeah, he actually taught me how to play against the wall one summer. Yeah, he was, you know, he was, we talked about, you know, Coach Storick and all he does for the sport. Coach Pivik was definitely an ambassador for the game in Coon Rapids as well for, for many, many years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Strong play at the net for Pivovar gets them into the lead quickly. Definitely an understatement. And good thought, just played it a touch too long. It's 15 all. Definitely over the shortest part of the net, though. I mean, great find down the middle. Double fault gives Coon Rapids. I believe we're at. I believe we're at 30, 40. 30 all maybe. It was a huge, huge point there. That one's wide, and I believe. Yeah, I believe that was that was uh that I believe that was break point, so I believe we're at six six. Wow. Tie break underway. And tie break will be oh no, no they sent it back to him, so maybe not. No, he is giving him up. All right. So yeah, so uh, huge break and and so best to, first to seven, win by two. And it should it. Should Coon Rapids win the best of seven, win by two, then they'll go to super tie break, best first to ten, win by two. Yup.
one hooking and we'll we'll get out. So the first point will go to Spring Lake Park. Jensfold had some awesome digs there, scrambling around. Pressure just too much. How do they decide? I suppose it, does it just the the service continue to to go through that same rotation when they get into the tie break? I believe. Oh man, I was an ITA official. I should know this one, but I believe it's uh, it's determined by whoever served first in the set. Just on the line. Great oh, play wow. again from Gable at the net and. In, early 3-0 lead here in the tie break for Spring Lake Park. He's just there every time. sent a little bit too long. That was all Savelli just kept kept coming back to him. I believe just before the point, Cal was asking uh, Spring Park if he had one touched the net or if his racket had crossed the the plane before he made contact with the ball. A couple of points for Coon Rapids and Gets them back into this. Still trailing 3 2. Double fault will even it up. <laughs> switch service every two points, switch sides every six? Correct, yeah. strong play from Jenswold and Pivovar early on had a great play at the net but uh, Jenswold just doing a great job of sending Gable deep into the corner and he gets the serve with Coon Rapids now up 4-3 in the tie break. out in front of it a bit, 4-4. Four, four.
It's a high bouncing second serve. Pivovar will will serve. Coon Rapids leading the tie break 5-4. Gable continues to be strong at the net. Hey, that, that is kind of the, the ultimate storyline of this match, I think, is two very evenly matched teams going back and forth, neither able to, to really hold any sort of momentum. And the second storyline would, would be Gable and in particular, but both of the uh, Panthers really playing strong at the net. Tough time to double fall. And so Lead. Coon Rapids is up 6-5. So an opportunity here to, to win and enforce the super tie break, if I'm not mistaken, which is quite possible. But that's a double fall. So now I believe we're in a uh, win by two scenario. I believe that is correct. I believe it is 6-all. Historic, huh? trying to keep him moving. So yeah, at, at an advantage here are the Cardinals trying to force it to a super tie break. And a double fault is. will give them the 7-6 win. So now they will go to the super tie break, correct? Well, Ramil, I want to thank you for, for being with us. Uh, the clock is ticking, so you, you got to head out. I, I do appreciate you being here uh, and helping me out, though, this afternoon. Um, and I guess you'll just have to tune in to YouTube, CTN, Coon Rapids a little bit later to, to catch the conclusion. That's right. No, I really appreciate you having me here. This is awesome. It's, it's great to be uh, on here with a legend. Well, I don't know if I go that far, but I do appreciate your assistance. Oh, thank you for all you do, and I appreciate the opportunity. Well, we, we, have, a, we have a great time, and uh, hopefully you can join us again sometime. Yes, sir. And we will watch as uh, these two get ready for... The super tie break, first to 10, win by two. And as we talked about, just neither team able to get any kind of momentum throughout this contest. It's been back and forth, a 6-4 win in set one for Gable and Pivovar of 
Spring Lake Park, a 7-6 win in set two for the Cardinals of Savelli and Jensvold. And now we go to the to the super tie break. First to 10, win by two. Looks like Gable will have the opening service of the super tie break. The team competition already decided in favor of the home Cardinals. They have won five of the first six to finish. Good play by Pivovar at, at the net. Good play by Jensvold, but just long. Double fall for Cal Jensvold. Couple of good plays at the net, first by Joe Savelli, and then followed up with some good back and forth play from Jensvold. Finally, the long shot from Gable hooking and ending up out of bounds. 2 1 lead as Pivovar serves here in the super tie break. And he double faults. Turn into the net from Savelli. So the Cardinals will get the service, but trail 3 2 here in the super tie break. Double fault for Savelli. They'll switch sides with Spring Lake Park leading 4 2. First to 10, I believe. Win by. Sun trying to fight its way out from behind the clouds it's been hiding behind all afternoon. Could have made its way out about an hour and a half ago. And a good return cross court from Pivovar out of the reach of Savelli. Didn't put a lot on it, but put it in the right spot. 
And now the Panthers with a 5-2 edge. And again, strong net play from this top duo from Spring Lake Park. This time from Ian Pivovar. They have a 6-2 advantage. Long back and forth battle. That one was just too long and it's now a 7-2 advantage. Pivovar and Gable jumped out to a 3-0 lead in the first set. Coon Rapids battled back, made it close to the end, lost that first set 4-6. And after Coon Rapids led early in set number two, it was even at 6-all. Coon Rapids winning in the tie break 8-6 to force this super tie break. And now they need a little bit of a rally here, trailing 2-7. Quick plays at the net, and Savelli's is into the net. It's now 8-2 in favor of Spring Lake Park. And the return into the net. Now 8-3. Nice play by Jensvold and Pivovar able to get a racket on it, but no chance to get it back in play. And at 8 4, we'll switch sides. Another quick back and forth at the net. This time it's Pivovar playing it short. Gun Rapids chipping away at that lead. Panthers had jumped to a 7 2 advantage in this super tie break. Now still hold a 5, an 8 5 edge. Strong play from Jensvold at the net, and we're back within a couple. And Long makes it 8-7. And this is what it has been all afternoon between these two teams, just back and forth. Neither team giving up 
much momentum or allowing their opponent to get too far in front. Ooh, right down the line, and it will be match point for the Panthers. Biggest service of the game here for Ian Pivovar. Right down the tee and Gable can't quite keep it in. So Goon Rapids keeps its hopes alive. They will get the service. Still a match point for Spring Lake Park. Coon Rapids can win the next point. They'll be able to, to force it to a first to two, win by two. Down the line and Pivovar going for it again, slips and goes down hard, but that will make it nine all. And so now an essential deuce situation. We see Pivovar slip and go down a couple of times in this match. None harder than the first. But uh, he may be a little sore after this one's all said and done. Nine all in the super tie break. It doesn't get any closer than this. Coon Rapids will take the lead on the wide return. And now Coon Rapids will have match point. long and the Cardinals are going to survive and win with an 11-9 victory in the super tie break after losing the opening set 6-4 they come back and win 7-6 11-9 Coon Rapids as a team a 7-1 winner will improve their record to 7-4 on the season and uh, this is one of the more dramatic back and forth close matches that we have seen in our tennis coverage history here. and uh, Phil, uh, Philip Gable and Ian Pivovar for the uh, Spring Lake Park Panthers uh, gave us a great show along with Joe Savelli and Cal Jensvold for Coon Rapids turning in an instant classic to get the win and uh, help the team to that 7-4 record to start the season but that is going to do it for this edition of ctn sports I want to thank everybody out there for joining us and continuing to support everything we do here at ctn for the entire crew including neil set who provided such great color analysis throughout uh, i am joe young thank you